Well, a substitute teacher out on Long Island was dropped from his job for fighting with a student. A few weeks later, the teacher returned to the classroom, shot the student unsuccessfully, held the class hostage, and then shot himself successfully. The last two sentences of the New York Times really captured my attention. A neighbor described him as a nice boy, always reading Catcher in the Rye. This nitwit Chapman, who shot John Lennon, and the whiz kid Hinckley, who shot Reagan and his press secretary, both said that they wanted to draw the attention of the world to Catcher in the Rye, and that reading the Catcher in the Rye would be their defense. So it, it seemed to be time for me to read it again. So I, I borrowed a copy from a friend of mine because I wanted to see what she had underlined and well, more importantly, I wanted to find out more about why this beautiful, sensitive story published in July 1951 had turned into this manifesto of hate. So I started reading. It's pretty much exactly as I remember. Everybody's a phony. Page two, my brother's in Hollywood being a prostitute. Page three, what a phony slob his father was. Page nine, people never notice anything. Page 22, my hair finally stood up. <laughs> you remember Holden Caulfield, the definitive sensitive youth, wearing his red hunter's cap? You know, a, a deer hunting hat? Like hell it is. This is a people shooting hat. I shoot people in this hat. It's a touching story, comic because the boy wants to do so much and can't do anything, wants everyone to like him, is only hateful, and he's completely self-involved. In other words, a, a pretty accurate picture of a male adolescent. But what alarms me most about the book is this. It's primarily about paralysis. I mean, the boy cannot function. Now, there's nothing wrong in writing about emotional and intellectual paralysis. It may indeed, thanks to Chekhov and Samuel Beckett, be the great modern theme of the extraordinary last lines of the play Waiting for Godot. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Stage directions. They do not move. But, but the aura around this book of Salinger's which perhaps should be read by everyone except young men, is this. It mirrors the great tragedy of our time. The death of the imagination. The imagination, which has become so debased that being imaginative now stands as something completely outside ourselves, as a synonym of science fiction, Star Wars, so imaginative. And Star Trek, so imaginative. And Lord of the Rings, all those dwarfs and hobbits, so damn imaginative. You know, what is schizophrenia really but a horrifying state of where what's up in here doesn't quite match up with what's out there? You see, I believe that the imagination is the passport we create as humans to allow us to help take us into the real world. It's another phrase for what is most uniquely us. It's God's gift to make the act of self-examination. 